Hello, my friends. We're doing something a little different today. Um, I am recording this voiceover because I feel like it's going to go a little more smooth than my on the fly talking. Um, but I want to introduce my friend Ali Wagner through her sculpts. This is one of her finished sculpts, too Figment and the Flash. Um, she has very graciously sent me the unpainted sculpts of her newest line, which is the Gravity Falls line. So Mabel, Dipper, and Bill Cipher. Now I had suggested she build this really fun diorama to go with them. Um, and she thought that'd be more up my alley. So she very, <laughs> excuse the pun alley. Um, she goes by Bafa59 on Instagram. And she, I think Ali Wagner Sculpts is her Facebook. I will link it below. Um, but she very graciously sent me these sculpts and I thought it'd be really fun to create a diorama using the crescent board like I did for my graphic novel boardwalk design that I used to draw perspective. So the first thing I did was create a sketch. I wanted to make sure the proportions were correct so I started by measuring the sculpts and then figuring out the correct proportion of how tall the mystery shack should be as well as the doors and you know like the window all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I started fleshing out the walls and basically just getting the general shape of what I wanted down. Now, this was five hours of footage. Most of it was roof shingling. Oh my God, that took forever. And I did it over the course of days. So I've managed to get this video into a 10 minute video. And then that way, um, A, it'll be more appealing to watch because who wants to watch five hours of someone just doing, it's very boring. Um, and I'll explain things here or there. And if you have questions about something I'm doing that maybe I didn't touch on in the voiceover, please feel free to comment down below and I'm happy to explain what I was doing. Basically, I just kind of fleshed out the wall shape and got the correct proportion that I wanted. Then I started putting in um, the, you know, the space for the door. And I wanted this to be really 3D in a lot of ways, not just like, you know, wall, wall, wall. So I thought it'd be clever to add a lot of the um, effects of, well, A, I wanted the door to be open. So I made sure to score one side and then cut the other two sides completely so the door will be open. Um, but then also you'll see I start adding a frame around the door. And I build the frame up, not just using one piece of the crescent board, but I use two so that it really gives it some depth. Now the idea to add lighting came in a little bit later. Um, because I had left the door cracked and I cut open the top window, I thought it'd be really neat to put in some kind of like, I had those little flameless candles and of course I had this great idea and then I couldn't find them. So I went on Amazon and I found a pack of like these seven light up they change color they're like these cute little orb things and I'm like great this is awesome it'll fit in the house I'll get to that because it fit but then I couldn't get it out it was a whole thing when that comes up I'll explain a little bit more but here's me making the door frame where I'm adding the strips on and then I'm going to add a second row of strips so that it really has that pronounced look and again, I, I know this is kind of all going fast and if you do have questions, like I said, please don't hesitate to ask me. I thought it would be kind of neat to bevel some of the edges here so it looked kind of like wood, um, but be cautious with when you're using an X-Acto knife because you really can hurt yourself. Um, I have stabbed myself many times. <laughs> so. Once I glued all the sides together, and I know I cut that out, but I just thought it wasn't as important as a lot of the other fun stuff, um, I put it on another piece of board to create the bottom. And then what I realized was I had to put the extension, there's a little part from the house as well, um, or I think it's actually, it says gifts above it, so it could be um, part of the gift shop area. But I realized I forgot to put that on, so I had to now make an extra part of the base that I would attach later on. Um, and then, you know, that's another one where I had a door and I decided to shift the door over, create the frame again, but there is a cola machine, I believe, on that side of the door. So this is what I'm making here is I'm starting to get the sides of the cola machine and I'm scoring the edges so that I can fold them over so it gives it the depth. And then what I can do is later on, after I paint everything, I can attach it right to the wall. 
so I'll be able to glue it right on. And that's where it got stuck because it had one of the <laughs> glue strings attached to it. <laughs> so then um, once I've attached everything, I put it on a larger piece of um, crescent board to make the base and I intentionally kind of squared off where I wanted it so that way I know where it's going to fit on the base later on and I still need to make a foundation. So creating the roof I made sure to put a little notch in that one side so it fit over um, the extension that I added and then again I, I you can honestly just use again the same stencil which is what I'm doing on the smaller one because of the angle I needed to make sure it was correct on both sides so I would flip it stencil it on and then cut it out and I was able to get the same exact shape on both sides. Angles are really hard and I am not good at math so I just did the best I could. I winged a lot of this um, but most people will use a protractor. So in the last frame I think I was actually creating the base um, and showing how I put it on and I added little stencils but here I'm creating the back wall because I want there to be um, the trees and when I paint it it's going to look more like have more depth to it but this is basically just a quick silhouette of the pine trees that are in the back and then I wanted to make sure that it connected so I joined them together even though they're going to be at a 90 degree angle you still want it to read like it's a continuous flow. So now what I needed to do is glue on the sides. So I put down some tape and I held both sides on with tape to the bottom so that I could glue it. And this is basically what I was talking about here. Um, oh, okay, we're gonna start getting into shingling. So before I thought of the genius way of how to do this, I was cutting each strip that I had down into one inch squares. And for the first day, I was literally doing that and cutting notches into each piece with the X-Acto knife. And let me tell you, this took forever and I, I literally got bored so I stopped and I had to do something else because it was just so, it was, it was tough. It, it, it's tedious. And of course the end result looks freaking amazing, but you know, it takes a while to get there. And then I realized I have a paper cutter. So I took my paper cutter and started cutting strips and, um, which you're not going to see it in the video, but I cut strips and then I would score, you know, the one inch square and then snap them apart just to make it go faster. Eventually, I also learned to use a scissor to cut the notches because it was so tedious with the knife and it was taking so long. I kept breaking the tip of the X-Acto blades, which is why I went to the bigger knife. But I just thought, you know what, let me try the scissor. And it actually worked really well. Um, something else I didn't touch on was the light. So the doorway is kind of small. And here I am with this brilliant idea. I order these lights, I get them. They literally came the next day because that's, you know, Amazon. Um, and what I ended up doing was I thought, okay, I put it in there. It was great. And then I thought, well, this is not easy to turn on and off and it's hard to get out. I had to basically like force it out. I almost broke the door off. So I cut a circle, the size of the light into the back of the cabin and then pushed it through so that since the back of the cabin is hidden by the, um, trees and such, it hides the switch but it's also much easier to turn on and off than trying to fish this thing out of the house every time I want to turn it on or off. So I also created a lot of the signage, including the mystery shack sign and a couple other little things here and there like the weather vane. And I forgot to turn the camera on apparently. So a lot of that stuff was done off camera, but I will tell you that it's the details that make the design. That's why shingling the roof was really important even though it was kind of tedious and boring over time. They, they look great and that's what makes the design really pop. Um, so this is sculptors or uh, prop makers foam. And what I did was I ordered it because I thought it'd be really cool. I know there's grass on the roof and it's very flexible material. So I basically cut it out so that I could use it as the grass parts. And then when I paint it, it will be kind of seamless. Um, with the signage, um, I'll touch on that Maybe in when I'm painting it, I can talk about it more because I don't have a lot of footage, obviously, of me building them. Um, and yes, I know if you're a big Gravity Falls fan, you're probably going to yell at me because there are no cobblestones leading up to the house. But I really liked the foam and I didn't want to waste it, so I added cobblestones. Um, also, that corrugated metal roof over there, 
I thought this was a perfect opportunity to utilize that because I could make that corrugated look. It was really hard to get that look with the foam, with the crescent board, but the foam really makes that pop. So this is where we are right now. This is um, what I have for my model. I even built the stairs. I'm gonna be painting it next, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's what it looks like lit up. Um, stay tuned, and I guess I'll see you back at the drawing board. <laughs>